kids, Miss Kulkarni here. In this video, we'll continue with organic chemistry and we're going to learn how to name aldehydes and ketones. But before that, how do we know a given compound is an aldehyde? Well, this is the general structure for an aldehyde. The R group is an alkyl group like it could be a methyl group or it could be an ethyl group and then we have the main functional group here which is CHO. We can also write that in this format. I would point out one thing, the carbon atom here is bonded with one hydrogen because when we think about ketones and aldehyde, this is the main way you can differentiate an aldehyde from ketone. And here's an example of an aldehyde. So there we go. That's our aldehyde group. And we are going to find out how we can name this particular aldehyde. So these are some guidelines for naming an aldehyde. The very first thing, we need to look for the longest carbon chain and it must contain the carbonyl carbon from aldehyde group. And then we find out the parent name for that alkene. Once that is done, we are going to find out the numbering for carbon atom. And the one with CHO group should get the lowest possible number. Then we move on to change the name of the parent. We end up the parent name by E like hexane, pentane. And if we have that pentane, we remove that E and then we add AL. So it will become pentanel ending with AL there. And of course, if there are substituents, we are going to use the number and the type of substituent there from the list. And if it's an aromatic aldehyde, then definitely we are going to use the compound which corresponds to that like benzene and we say benzyl dehyde. Let's work on some examples now. So here is an aldehyde and that is the functional group which is CHO. We do count the carbon atom which belongs to aldehyde group. So that will be number one and we keep on numbering the rest of carbon atoms to find the longest chain. So the parent chain here has five carbon atoms that stands for pentane. Remember, we're going to cross out that E and we're going to add AL. So ideally, this is going to be pentanel. If you really want to find out where that aldehyde group is, we can put as one pentanel or we can put penten one AL. Typically, if it comes in position number one, we don't write down that one. So the answer for this will be simply pentanel. Let's look at the next one. That's our aldehyde group. So the numbering goes from that aldehyde carbon. And now we have to find out the longest chain. So which way we are going to go? In this case, whichever way we go, we end up having still same number of chain. So I'm going to just go in the straight line. So we got pentane again. So this will be pentanel. But wait a second. We got a substituent group, which is methyl group there on carbon atom number four. So the best way to write down is you put pentane. Now aldehyde is going to be on one position. So we can put one AL that indicates aldehyde at position one. And at position 4, we got methyl group. So we put 4 methyl 1 pentanel or 4 methyl penten 1 AL. Here is our next example. That's our aldehyde group. And now we need to look for the longest chain beginning with number 1 for aldehyde carbon atom. And when we come at the junction, which way we are going to go? If we go along this path, we have to stop from 3, we go to 4, so it will be 4 carbon atom chain. Versus if we go along this 
pathway we get the longer chain which is 5 carbon atom so the parent name is pentane it's an aldehyde so it will be pentan 1 al and now we think about the substituent the substituent is ch2 br this is a little tricky if it is ch3 we call that as methyl group when there is a bromine attached to that we call the group as bromomethyl so we got a group in position 3 as 3 bromomethyl how about one more example this is our aldehyde group cho if you look at the ring this is the aromatic ring which is benzene so it's an aldehyde with benzene ring and the simplest way to name that is benzyl dehyde we just call that as aldehyde with benzene ring now let's talk about ketone functional group this could be confusing because ketone and aldehyde both have carbonyl function the main difference is in aldehyde we got one side alkyl and second side was hydrogen in this case in ketone both these groups are alkyl groups so example which is given here is like this we have ch3 on both sides and carbonyl in the middle let's find out how we are going to name these ketones pretty much it is same like aldehyde with a small difference so the first step will be longest carbon chain which contains the ketone carbonyl atom then we get the parent alkane name with that after that we number the chain with carbonyl group getting the lowest possible number and after that we are going to replace that e with own so maybe if we have a chain with five carbon atom the parent name will be pentane we remove that e and we are going to put that ketone as penta known and of course we need to write down which position is that carbonyl ketone group and if there are other substituents as usual we are going to write down their names and the corresponding number so let's look at some examples over here we got two alkyl groups and that's our ketone functional group so the total longest chain which contains the ketone will be one two and three and remember if i go reverse way i still get that one two three that means the carbonyl ketone will still have number two three gives me the parent name as propane and in this case this is an ketone so we are going to say propane known o n e and the position at which we get that ketone is 2 so it will be 2 propanone we can also write down this as propen 2 o n e all right let's work on the next one if we are going to number this from right side we get the carbonyl ketone number 4 versus if i am going to number from left to right what do i get i get number two so this is the one i'm going to use we are not going to select the one which gives higher number for the ketone carbonyl group that is pentane and then this is going to be a ketone so i'm going to put pentanone the ketone group is at position 2 so it is 2 pentanone or we can write that as penten 2 one now let me add one more thing in some literature books and journals you may find the reference given to ketone with just alkyl groups so like this group here is methyl group and this group over here is propyl group so you may see a reference where it may say methyl propyl ketone of course we will try to stick with our nomenclature which ends with ones 
let's work on some more examples so that's the ketone and how will be the numbering obviously the ketone carbon should get the lowest number and when you come at the junction just check which one is going to give you the longest chain so that's the functional group methyl group and that's the ketone over here the parent chain is pentane and it's a ketone so it's pentanone that will be at position two and then we got in position four methyl group so we can add as four methyl to pentanone or we can also write down as four methyl pentane to own. Let's work on one more example. That's our carbonyl ketone. And then we got six membered carbon ring, which will be called as cyclohexane. That's our parent name. And we got a ketone. So we're going to say cyclohexane known, adding that O-N-E at the end. Do we need to write down position 1 here? Not really. If it's only one ketone, it's obvious that that will be number 1 in case of a cyclic ring. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll see you again in next video. Until then, bye-bye.